Alright, this video is the second in my series on the game theory of bullying. And in particular, there's three games I'm trying to model. This is schoolyard bullying for fifth graders. We're imagining a, a group of fifth grade friends where one friend is trying to decide whether to bully. And the first game, the game that came before that, I have a different video on that. That is where the bully is trying to decide, do I bully or not? And each member of the group has to decide if the bully bullies, do you stand up to them and defend the victim, or do you just stay quiet? And that was the first game. And when we modeled that game, what we realized was the payoffs for the friend trying to decide, do I defend the victim, those might depend on their expectation of what the rest of the group will do. On one hand, if they defend the victim and the rest of the group sides with the bully, the bully might actually bully the person who's defending the victim and the rest of the group would just let that happen. So that's one scenario and that would certainly affect um, whether people stood up to the bully. On the other hand, if you defend the victim and the whole group sides with the person defending the victim, You've actually raised your status by standing up to the bully. You've raised your status, you've raised your regard from people in the group, you've shown that people will go along with you. And so those two scenarios are very different. So when each member is trying to decide, do I stand up? Um, they're gonna be thinking about this second game. And the second game is, so this game assumes that the bully has already bullied, that one member of the group has already stood up to the bully and defended the victim, and each person is trying to decide, do I side with the bully or do I side with the defender? And the bully at that point has to decide, um, do I back down if one person has confronted me, or do I challenge the defender, which could be, could take the form of bullying the defender. All right, so what we need is we need to fill this out with, with payoffs. And to do that, we're gonna do some sort of analysis where we think about what are the incentives either way for both of our players in our game. And I'm not going to do as detailed of analysis of this as I did in the previous video. I'm just going to write down some of the incentives. All right, so the bully cares about their status in the group, whether or not they save face, um, pride, a lot of the bullies incentives here are sort of related to each other. And then the friend cares about living out their own values. They kind of know that siding with the defender is the right way to go. Um, and that would increase their self-esteem if they lived out their values. Um, but they also fear confrontation. The experience of confrontation may depend on how mean the bully is, how vindictive the bully is, all that kind of stuff. So we've, we've started to outline the incentives at play. Now, if we're trying to fill out the payoffs in one of these matrices, one thing we can do is we can figure out which of the four boxes is the bully's favorite and least favorite, and which of the four boxes is the friend's favorite and least favorite. So let's try to do that. So the bully um, would much prefer that the friends side with the bully rather than the defender, so the bully's favorite is definitely in this column, and the bully probably prefers um, when friends side with the bully and the bully challenges the defender, in which case the bully has sort of established their role at the top of the pecking order in the group. And so this is the bully's favorite box. The bully's least favorite box is definitely going to be when the friends decide with the defender. That's going to cause the bully shame. It's going to show that the bully actually does have low status in the group because people side with the other person. And so it's definitely in this column, and which is worse, when they back down and people side with the defender or when they challenge. And it's probably, it's probably going to be this one. The bully's least favorite scenario is when the bully backs down and so loses face and everybody sides with the defender. Now, what about the friend's uh, favorite box? Well, the friend prefers to side with the defender. They know that's right. That's going to give them self-esteem for choosing something in this box. But will they prefer when the bully backs down or when the bully challenges? Well, probably, probably they're going to prefer when the bully backs down because that means there's no confrontation that they have to deal with. Their least favorite box, um, we might think through carefully each one of these boxes and ask ourselves which is the worst box for the friend. And if the friend is really afraid of confrontation, the worst box might actually be when the friend sides with the defender, but the bully challenges that and bullies both the friend and the defender. 
in which case this box could end up being based on their choice they get bullied so that's their least favorite now if we have the favorite and least favorite we can put a maximum and a minimum utility values in for these and then we ha just have to um, choose some values in between there that make sense for the other two boxes and it doesn't matter too much what values as long as obviously the max is higher than the min. All of these are going to be relative to each other, so I could have multiplied all these by 100, I could have added 10, it doesn't matter the exact numbers you put in there. Now all we need to do is fill out the payoffs in these two boxes for the bully, and we know that those payoffs are between negative 10 and 15. And so we ask ourselves which one of these boxes is better? for the bully than the other. And of course, the bully much prefers when the friends side with the bully. That's going to indicate high status in the group. That's gonna feel good to the bully. So probably this one is going to feel better for the bully than this one. So let's put in the utilities to reflect that. Now, I put in a utility of zero here because backing down doesn't feel good. And I, from the previous video, I had a baseline utility of five for being part of the friend group. So if the bully bullies and then is forced to back down, I'd like the utility to be lower than the five, which they would get if they never bullied in the first place. And of course, it feels bad when your friends side with the defender, even if you challenge them. So I, I put negative five for that utility. All right, now we just need to think through from the friend's perspective, which one of these is better or worse? We know that they're going to be between negative eight and 10, whatever values we put here. So here are some possible values for this. In this case, I've said they prefer it when the bully backs down, but it could be that when the bully challenges the defender, they're like, whoa, I'm really glad I made the choice that for, of siding with the bully. Otherwise, I would be over here being bullied myself. So you could actually tell a story going both ways, but this is just one, one setup. And let me solve the Nash equilibrium to think about does the payoff structure I've set up make sense with what we see in the real world? All right, so we have a Nash equilibrium in this box where the bully challenges the defender and the friend sides with the bully. And we know this situation does happen in the real world. As a matter of fact, this is the situation we're trying to change through our policy. We wanna change the incentives, and if all the friends are gonna side with the bully, then most of the friends are probably going to be afraid to challenge the bully, and this leads to a situation where bullying is perpetual. We don't like that. We're trying to use a game theory analysis to figure out how do we change that and to model the situation. And we've arrived at a set of payoffs that lead to something that we actually observe in the real world, which, which feels good. So now we just have to ask ourselves, okay, we want to change this. We would like to make it such that the friend would side with the defender. How do we get that to happen? Well, we know that between these two, the friend chose siding with the bully over siding with the defender in the case where the bully challenges the defender. And one of the motives for that is this fear of confrontation, this fear that, oh, I'm going to be bullied if I side with the defender. So if you can somehow reduce fear of confrontation, and maybe this is through assertiveness training, maybe it's through other factors like positive peer pressure, things like that, then you can increase this utility here. So all we need is for this utility to be higher than this utility to change up the Nash equilibrium. So let me just make, the, let me change this one utility to make it higher than this, and I'll show you how that changes the game. In which case, by changing this one utility so that it's not quite as bad to side with the defender if the bully challenges because you're less afraid of confrontation, we've totally changed the equilibrium, in which case we know in this friend group, people will generally side with the defender, and people who are thinking about, should I defend a victim, will know this if they know the social group well, and that's going to make it more likely that someone will defend the victim if someone in the group bullies someone else. And we know from the previous game that the existence of someone willing to do that leads to a Nash equilibrium where bullying doesn't happen in the first place. Now, there are other ways of changing these relative utilities. For example, instead of decreasing fear of confrontation, you could increase the salience of a person living out their values. That would also achieve the same thing. That could lead to higher utilities in this column and lower utilities in this column. And all we're trying to achieve is this utility being higher than this utility because 
we see that the bully has a dominant strategy in this situation, which is to challenge the defender. So we need friends who are willing to stick with the defender of the victim, even if the bully challenges them and tries to bully those defending the victim. So that's just an overview of how you might think about this particular second game in our analysis of schoolyard bullying. I hope you found this helpful in just thinking through what's the process for setting up utilities, how do you analyze them, how do you think about changing the utilities to get a different Nash equilibrium if you don't like the Nash equilibrium that you're observing. And I have one more game to analyze, and that is going to be, in the long run, do you stay friends with someone who's a bully? Because we've seen evidence that bullies do not do well. In the long run, they lose friends, they're not very popular, people don't like them, and they know that. And so the question is, why? Can we set up a game that explains that and Perhaps since that one's a long run game, we could use that game if we're trying to change this equilibrium such that the bully knows, oh, you might be top of the pecking order if you bully right now, but in a year and two years, you're gonna have low self-esteem because nobody's gonna wanna be friends with you even if they go along for the moment. So that's our next game, which I'll do in a different video.